Um, we would like to Sorry. welcome you all. That's all right. We'd like to welcome you all to Trent University and specifically to the School of Graduate Studies as you begin um, your master's and doctoral studies with us. It's very exciting to have all of you join us this fall in what we hope is a return to how we used to be, um, slowly transitioning into seeing all your lovely faces again and having you come to our campus. Um, I know this fall term, um, some of the programs are doing a bit of a hybrid or an online offering. Some of our programs are going back into person. So it will be important for you to keep in touch with your program departments and understand clearly what your role and um, what you need to do as a graduate student in your program. Today, we um, our session today is very much just to welcome you as graduate students, introduce you to some of our team, and give you um, an overview of some of the orientation activities and events we have going on throughout the month of August and the first week of September, where we can help you onboard and orient yourself to graduate studies at Trent University. Uh, we have Trail College, which is our graduate college. We have the principal, Dr. Michael Eamon, joining us this morning uh, for an overview of the college and what it can do for our graduate students. We have our president, Sebastian, from the TGSA um, joining us as well. He's going to give you an overview of the Trent Graduate Student Association and some of the things they are planning for your welcome. Then we will come back to our School of Graduate Studies, meet some more of the team, and we'll go over some of the orientation events that we have planned for you during the month. And then obviously if we can answer some questions and help you orient yourself, that's the main purpose of today. So today we're going to start with Michael. Uh, Michael, I'm not sure if you have a presentation or if you wanted to just speak, I, but- I am the presentation, so I'm- Awesome. Okay, so I'll stop sharing here and we're going to, like I said, Michael Eamon is the principal of Trail College. Thank you, Michael. No problem. Hi everyone, welcome. What a great international crowd we have there. So, you know, Ani, Namaste, Assalamu Alaikum, uh, <laughs> welcome everyone to Trent University. It's so great to see you there. And I know I missed a lot of languages, but uh, I hope you know that it's heartfelt that we welcome you here. Trent, by the way, is on the, the traditional lands of the Michisagi Anishinaabeg. And, you know, we embrace the idea of the indigenous knowledge that surrounds us and the legacy that we have of Indigenous knowledge. And, you know, Trail College in particular is smack dab in the middle of that territory. Now, you might ask yourself right now, okay, I'm at university, so why is some guy calling himself <laughs> the principal of Trail College talking to me? And the reality is that Trent University is a collegiate university. That means we were born in the same model as Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard. You may have heard of those universities, but, you know, They've heard of Trent, of course. And so Trent is born in that collegiate university, meaning that we are a big university, but we are broken into five smaller colleges. And if you are a brand new grad student to Trent, welcome, you are automatically a member of Trail College. Now, if you're a returning student, if you had done your uh, undergraduate degree or another degree at Trent, you are a member of whatever college you were originally a part of, but I would encourage you to join Trail College. Now, you may ask yourself, why should I join Trail College? Or what does Trail College have to offer me if you're a new student? And Trail College is the graduate college. We have supports and services and spaces for you to make your transition to grad school a lot easier. For example, at Trail College, it's a physical space in downtown Peterborough. So we're centrally, lo centrally located where most of the housing and accommodation is for grad students. We're downtown and we can help you with for example, academic skills, time management. We have a special person with, with um, an expertise in graduate student time management, Dr. Sue Beckworth. We put on grad student activities all throughout the year. We offer a library at Trail College, separate from this main library where you can study independent and separate graduate study rooms. We offer offices to graduate students as well. So we have all these graduate student spaces and services that we can offer to you. Now, I won't talk too much because you'll be seeing me later on in the month and hopefully throughout the year because we have more orientation things, but I just wanna say a couple things. The whole idea of the college is to create a community in this rarefied environment. We all share something in common. No matter where we are in the world, we all share the idea that education will make us a better person. And when we become a better person, then we can improve the lives of others. And so when you come to Trail College, you will get free of charge, as <laughs> a Trail College scarf. 
And this limited, this is a badge of honor. And on the scarf has a little model. And the model says something in Latin, nunc cognosco ex parte. And that means now I know in part. Now you're further confused because you're like, oh my God, I signed up for a university. Now I'm talking to some dude from a college and I want to know more than a part. I want to know it all. So what's this knowing in part bit all about? And I just wanted to say that is what Trail College is all about. It's a supportive community that acknowledges that we're here on a journey and this journey starts now. And we know in part and we're going to know a little bit more and we'll know a little bit more and know a little bit more and we'll get our degrees and we'll open our up and start keep on this journey of education for the rest of our lives. And so at Trail College, we're proud know it sums, not know it all. Nobody wants to be a know it all, they're jerks. You want to be a know it sum and you want to be proudly part of Trail. So come down and visit your college when you come to Peterborough, get your scarf. We'll have in that orientation week, we'll have a big barbecue for everyone. We have different activities. We'll talk to you more about the activities later on in the month and in the, in the week. And later on in October, we'll have a big scarf ceremony where everybody will be presented their scarf. So all I want to say today is welcome, put a face to the name, come to the principal. It's not a bad thing to come to the principal's office at Trail College. Welcome to Trail College, welcome to Trent University, and good luck on this great journey. And most importantly, have fun. It's going to be tough, I know it. it's going to be stressful, but part of my job is to also make it an enjoyable experience, just like the whole team you'll be talking to today. We're here to help you. So thank you, welcome once again, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Michael. That's great. Um, now we'd like to turn it over to Sebastian Johnson Lindsay, who is our president of our Trent Graduate Student Association. Sebastian. Wonderful. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, Michael's a hard act to follow. Uh, yes. uh, I'm sure everyone here will be able to get to know Michael more. Um, and my name is Sebastian Johnston Lindsay, and as Aaron just said, I am uh, currently serving as the president of your student government here, the Trent Graduate Students Association. Um, and it's it's my pleasure to uh, talk briefly about the TGSA and some of the main ways that we are here to support you as you take on uh, your graduate studies here at Trent. Um, so the primary focus of the TGSA is to advocate for, support, and educate uh, graduate students in their roles as students and community members here at Trent and in the larger Peterborough community. And with this comes a firm commitment to equity and inclusion in our ranks and by encouraging feedback and participation from our members. Um, so in terms of advocacy as a graduate student, whether you're a full-time student or a part-time student, you are a fee-paying member of the Graduate Students Association. And so this means that we are all, at all times answerable and responsible to you. Uh, so if there's anything that you want to see happen that isn't happening, or if you have questions about an issue in your program or Trent more broadly, uh, you can always feel free to reach out to us. And I wanna really emphasize the fact that no concern is too small to be brought up to us and that the TGSA can only be as effective as the feedback that we get from our membership. Um, and secondly, in terms of um, uh, financial support, uh, there's two forms, two main forms of, of financial support that we offer. One is the academic bursary. Uh, and this is for expenses related to your studies and your research, uh, whether that's to purchase books, and travel expenses for, to uh, conferences, which maybe will happen in the future. Uh, you might need that. Um, or even if you need like a, a specific access to a computer program, we're, we're here to, to help uh, facilitate that and ensure that you're, you're being supported at, in, in your capacity as a student. Uh, but it's also important to understand that we're, we're not just students, right? Um, we're, we're, we're complex individuals. Um, and so we wanna support students holistically. Um, and so that's where we have the emergency bursary. And this, in, this can be used for any unexpected costs for healthcare, groceries, moving and transportation, car repairs, the, the list is really um, endless. Uh, both of these are available to both full-time and part-time students. And um, we've, we've started to doing, uh, approving them um, on a rolling basis. So there are per term deadlines, which are um, on the forms themselves uh, to watch out for. That's when we'll be looking at the most, uh, most carefully, most, most closely. But um, we also understand that emergencies happen at all times. So we're always, we're always looking and uh, we wanna be there to support you. But if you have any questions, you can always reach out uh, to myself or any member of the TGSA executive team. Um, and I just wanna to say too, that we're currently revisiting some of the language on our emergency bursary to better uh, help students who might have costs not directly related to physical health or unexpected costs and to try and be as inclusive as possible and try and streamline that process. Um, 
And the, fin the final part of the TGSA is uh, we're, we're here to educate our members, which might seem kind of redundant given that we're all in graduate school. Um, but by educate, I mean, we, we want to provide spaces and events where our members can get answers, uh, the answers to things that they're looking for. For example, we help organize events like the with groups like Career Space at Trent, where alumni come and talk about their experiences since graduation. We also organize uh, panels and speaker events on major issues facing students and faculty at Trent. We also work very closely with groups like QP, uh, the union which you'll be a member of as a, as a GTA here at Trent. And of course, we work with Trail College as closely as possible to ensure um, that we're, we're providing some, some meaningful programming and uh, educational opportunities for our members. Um, and then finally, I left the, left the best to last, of course. Um, we, we also like to have fun. Uh, we're not just all about uh, the, the serious stuff. So I wanted to draw um, all, of, all of your attention to some of the events, which I believe are uh, included on the orientation page that Laurie's put together. Um, so the first of which is uh, the TGSA meet and greet, and that's on August 13th at 6 p.m. And this is really meant as, a, as an opportunity to kind of come and meet uh, the working members of the Graduate Students Association. So we're uh, an executive team and a, and a board of governors, um, all elected and uh, appointed by the student body. And so this is a really good opportunity to come and uh, chat with the people who are working to improve your, your experience here at Trent. Um, and maybe even if you wanted, wanted to get involved, it would be a good way to kind of understand what, what we do. And if you want to do it, then you can come and figure that out. Um, there's also the code names game night, and I've recently. It's it's a lot of fun if you haven't played it. I I I'd never played it before until last week, and it's it's fun. Um, our uh, I, I should say here that our VP Student Affairs has organized all of this. Uh, her name is Gabriella, and she'll be she'll be the one hosting all of these. Um, so if you haven't played code names, come out and give it a try. If you have, then you know how much fun it is. So you should be there regardless. And then finally. And this is a joint, the, the last event is on, uh, oh, I should say the code names is on August 18th at 7 p.m. And then the final one on August 20th at 6 p.m. is uh, a joint event hosted by QP and the TGSA uh, entitled What to Expect as a Teaching Assistant. And as the title suggests, this is all about um, how to uh, be a, an effective teaching assistant and some of the, the, the questions and concerns that might come up. Uh, QP is in charge of your uh, uh, advocating for you in terms of your um, your working life as a, as a as a graduate student and a, and a GTA, and so it, um, we want to facilitate that discussion in conjunction with them. And just to wrap it all up, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to the TGSA by contacting me or any of the members uh, via email. That's the probably the best way to get in contact with us. Um, all of our contact information is available on the TGSA website, which is trentgsa.ca. And then I should, I would be remiss if I didn't plug our social media. So um, please follow us on uh, Twitter, um, Facebook or Instagram, you know, pick your poison there. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, thank you all for listening. I really hope to uh, get to know some of you over the next month if you come out to the events, but then hopefully over the next year. And uh, all the best with uh, your graduate studies as they get underway. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sebastian. That was lovely. There's lots of questions in the chat, so I hope you guys are working on those. And lots of our, we, we do our, are planning lots of our sessions to answer a lot of these questions. So if you do have questions on finances or GTAs or registration, Hopefully we can help today, but we also have some targeted planned events that will specifically go over those areas and answer a lot of those questions for you. So back to the School of Graduate Studies. Erin, just one second, um, just before, I don't know if Sebastian was going to sign off or stay on for a few minutes too, but there was a question there in the Q&A about um, positions on the TGSA and whether they've already been mm. filled for this year. I think I can answer that, but Sebastian, would you like to speak to that? The question is, are there ways to join the TGSA for the 21-22 academic year, or have the positions already been filled? Thank you. Yeah, so that's an excellent question. Um, and the, the short answer is that there are two kind of intake periods, if you will. And um, the best way to get involved, if you're kind of new to Trent and you want to just get a taste of, of what it is to be on the TGSA, then to join as a program representative. And we're constantly looking for those. Um, that's that's really the best way to uh, get involved. A, a list of available positions should be on our website. Um, 
I don't know the exact page. If I, I, could, I might be able to put it in the chat if anyone's interested in that. Um, but uh, yeah, program representatives, absolutely. Uh, always looking for those. And that's, that's to help uh, inform the executive and how they uh, foster discussion between programs, because that's really what the TGSA wants to do is bring together all the graduate students at Trent from various uh, disciplines and sort of create that discussion, right? Yeah, um, but I'll, I'll link that in the, in the chat if that's possible. Yeah, once I find it. <laughs> Okay, so Michael's going to leave us now. He does have another commitment. Thank you, Michael. We'll see you again. Great to see you all. Take yeah. care. Bye, bye bye, Michael. And Sebastian, we'll give you a chance if you want to stick around or leave as well. I understand you have some doctoral studies you probably need to attend to as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then what our office is hoping to do now is just to go over some of those orientation events and make sure you do know where to find them and where to find the supports that are available to you as a graduate, incoming graduate student. So back to our presentation. I'm just going to share my screen again, sorry. Slide. There we go. Is that okay, Laura? Yeah, that looks good. Yep. Um, so just to let you know, when you do, if you do arrive on campus this fall, the School of Graduate Studies will be open, and we are located in Blackburn Hall. It is the first building you um, come into contact with when you do come onto campus. Um, it is where you can get your card, student card, your parking pass, and come and meet the staff of the School of Graduate Studies. So we're in Suite One One Five. You can also reach us through our main email and our telephone number if you do have questions before you start. So that is not Blackburn Hall you see in the image no. there. We're not quite that big. It's the library. <laughs> That's not it? a library, yes. Yeah, we're just down the road we're over here. Down over there, yeah. Just yeah. down the Autonomy River. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do wanna go over a few of the events that we are planning this um, month for you guys to welcome you and onboard you. So today we have the welcome and overview event. And then on August 26 is our official welcome orientation. So at this event, we do have some um, number of folks who will be coming to welcome you all to Trent and provide helpful information as you begin or continue your graduate studies. Uh, we do ask that you register for these events online. There are links on our website. We also have some program orientation. The individual programs will be reaching out to you and letting you know what they are planning to do, dates and times and events. Most of them will be virtual as we do have students sort of all over the world right now studying from all areas of the world. We do have a few presentations planned for you. So if these are all on our website. You don't have to write these down, but just to summarize them for you, we do have um, areas of the university that will be targeting resources and events planned for you, which offer information on a variety of topics, including registration, becoming a GTA, health insurance, finances, and everything you might need to know as a new international student, um, student services, and much more. Some of our events will be offered in a presentation format, while others are a drop-in style session with lots of time available for question and answers to ensure that all your questions do get answered. Um, here we have, so for the science students in, that will be in labs and areas around the university, we do have an overview and introduction to our facilities and animal care by some of our science staff coming up August 11th. We have a presentation from the financial aid team, which will include out-of-province loans and OSAP details. Um, on August 18th, for those of you with a graduate teaching assistantship, we have an hour overview with um, TGSA, QP, and some of our staff to go over how to sign up and what your duty is as a GTA. On August 23rd, we have um, the VP of Student Affairs coming to talk to us about some of the student services that are available to graduate students while you're studying. And on September 1st, our finance officer from the School of Graduate Studies will be giving an um, overview of some of the graduate scholarship information and where you can find a lot of those details and questions answered. For our international students, our Trent International team has put together um, a large variety of orientation presentations. 
These events will cover information for our new international students, including immigration, health insurances, services and supports available. Students arriving in Canada for their studies um, will have received a safe arrival email that will help with the steps involved. We also have um, a session on August 11th called Safe Arrival in Canada that will go over a lot of those details with you and answer any questions you may have. These are optional for grad students, but if you do feel as an international student that you need some support in these areas, please reach out to our Trent International team or to our team and we can connect you with some of the answers you may be looking for. We have some drop-in sessions planned over the next few weeks. So I will be hosting this afternoon and again next week registration drop-in events. So if you do have any questions on um, any registration, any of your course details, reading courses, um, transfer credits, anything like that, taking undergrad classes, auditing classes, please come to these sessions or send me an email. Um, Jane, our finance officer, will be hosting some workshops and drop-in sessions on the 17th and the 19th, the week of. Again, just a drop-in session where you can come in and ask her some questions if you do have any on um, your financial situation, on your funding, on the fees being applied to your account, or on some of your payment details that you may have. Um, just to go over some quick registration information, while I do have your attention, because this is my message, um, just to let you know sort of some housekeeping um, items, is that um, graduate students are expected to be registered 12 months a year, continuous registration, you don't get the summers off unless you take a break. Uh, we go three terms a year, they're each four months in length. We refer to them as the grad fall term the grad winter term and the grad spring summer term. If you are needing a break from your program or you wanna drop down to part-time studies or take, like I said, take a break, take a leave of absence, there is some paperwork involved and a few signatures, but absolutely available to you as a graduate student if you do need a break or need to put a pause on your studies. Um, again, please reach out if you have any questions either to us or to your program administrator. Once you are registered, you can go ahead and order your Trent student card through the icon in my Trent. And a reminder that our fall classes this term are starting on Thursday, the September the 9th. So check your schedules as you're signing up for your classes. And those of you with GTA assignments, classes, undergrad classes start the same day, September 9th. Um, if you are on campus, I just wanted to point out that we have a lovely student center on campus on the West Bank. The student office Center offers a wide variety of formal and informal study spaces and lecture halls. They also hold the Trent Student um, Central Student Association offices and a Starbucks on the main area. So this is sort of the building where a lot of students tend to gather, hang out, study, and take breaks with their with their peers. Um, sometimes have coffees with professors or meet with um, other people in your programs. It's a great little space. We also have our Bada Library next door, which many of you will become familiar with. This has study spaces, computer labs, um, computers are available to work on. <laughs> Sorry, the mailman came and my dog is barking. He's leaving. Um, sorry. Um, the Trent Library also has some designated graduate space. So if you do not have a, a student office or if you want an office up on the main campus, you can reach out to some of our library staff. And there is some areas in the library that you can sign up for and sort of rent for the term. Um, I guess the last thing I want to do is introduce our team who's here today. Um, I've introduced myself and Lori has said hello, but I'd like to give a chance for Jane and Jesse on our team to also introduce themselves and say hello. Jane? Hi, I'm Jane Runney, the Graduate Finance Officer. I look after all the processing of national, provincial and donor funded scholarships. I send out announcements about student accounts and um, bursaries for students. And I also work on payment plans and a variety of things related to student accounts. However, uh, I have been receiving requests for updates on payments. Payments are processed through our finance office. So they're working through, there is some time frame 
there was a question online, so that's why I'm going into this. Um, the money has to come from your financial institution to Trent's financial institution to then be downloaded and then manually applied to your student account. And that process could take five to seven business days, especially as we did have a civic holiday on Monday. So just be patient. It should be posted. Uh, funding should be posted. So that was an aside, but I'm Jane Rennie, graduate finance officer. Yes. And Jesse? Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Jesse Riwanto, and uh, similar to Lori, I'm one of the uh, administrative and equipment assistant here. So if you email us or come into the office, you'll see either me or Lori first. Um, <laughs> and I also help with a little bit of admission thing and also assisting Jane with some finance things. So yeah, if you guys have any question, welcome to drop by when we are open soon and email us. Thanks, Jesse. I'll just, I'll just add in to Erin because I didn't say much more than my name. Um, my main roles in the School of Graduate Studies are mostly with admissions, um, marketing, and then kind of a lot of international lately too. So um, lots of other things too, but you can reach out to me about that or whatever your question may be. So welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Laurie. Um, and we do have a few more team members. We have uh, Dean of Graduate Studies, Dr. James Connolly. We have our School of Graduate Studies manager, Stephanie Belfry, and another admin assistant, Sandra Kasturi. Our admissions officer, Sharon Maloney, is also with us. And these guys are all on a much overdue vacation this week. So they are not here. They will join us for other events throughout the month and you will get a chance to meet them shortly. So to end today, we just wanna make sure that you do have the information available to you to start your own orientation journey. Um, lots of available resources are on our website. Um, links are provided there for further information and lots of emails and um, people just reach out to if you do have questions or if you find your questions are not answered in the resources provided. Um, please reach out to your programs. I'd like to give a shout out to your program offices. We have some great administrative assistants there who are always available to help you. Please for, be sure to visit with them first as they often can provide assistance with program specific matters and concerns and are a wealth of knowledge in all the aspects of graduate studies. Our office will be open at the end of August back in person. And so if you are on campus, you can always stop by our office for help with um, any of the registration finances, academic concerns you may have, reach out by email. Uh, really looking forward to meeting you guys this year, hopefully many of you in person. Um, if you're not here this fall, hopefully you join us this winter term as we get back to some sort of new normal here at Trent and around the world. Um, and today's session is, that concludes today's session. This is really provided, providing you with some supports and links to help orient you. So we hope we've done that today and look forward to chatting with you guys all very shortly. We can take a few minutes here, I think, just to look at um, some of the some questions. Some of the common questions, yeah. Yeah, there's some questions in the Q&A, so. Sure, do you want to um, get some of them out? Yeah. Um, is Indigenous Studies course mandatory for grad students? Erin, your registration, I'll just let you answer that. Do you have to An take Indigenous Studies credit, that is an undergrad component. Yeah, so every undergrad student at Trent University must take one credit towards Indigenous Studies to earn their degree. Um, while we definitely encourage that at the graduate level, it is not a degree requirement. The second question is about whether there is any assistance from the TGSA or um, the college. This would actually come from international if there was assistance, but they're looking for help in getting from the airport. Um, I, I'm not. I'm personally not um, sure of the answer to that right now. I know other years there has been help with that, but um, I can definitely message my colleagues in international. And if you, um, I'm not sure who typed that message, but um, if you want to send your email um, to just the, to us in the chat, I can get back in touch with you later today with an answer to that if there's any assistance available. Um, next question, what measures are in store for grad students who do not get a study permit? So if you've applied for your study permit, you can start your studies online now. And any of the studies that you do will qualify you for the PGWP up until the end of this year. Beyond that, there, like IERCC hasn't had any policies announced 
beyond that, but you're kind of taking a little bit of a chance, like hopefully all is good and you get your study permit. But if for any reason it is um, a decline when you receive your answer back, then you've already started your studies and you do have to pay for that tuition and you'd have like you do have to come to finish the rest of your studies because classes will be in person hopefully all of them by January so it's just um you kind of uh, hopefully you've applied for it now and you're hoping to get it very soon I'm not sure exactly what stage you're at in in applying for your study permit but if that's the case um that would be good if you knew that you were going to be getting it fairly soon and could start. But you can reach out with more questions. Um, you can email me or email graduate at Trent U, but that's kind of the, the gist of it um, with the study permit. Um, where is Trail College located? Yes, it's at Trent at the Peterborough campus. So it's not at the Simons campus, it's at the downtown campus, but in Peterborough. And we do have um, transportation bus services that connect all of the buildings here at Trent in Peterborough. Yeah, so I, you might have already said this, Aaron, but um, our one graduate program that is not at Peterborough campus is the Master of Management program, and that is in Durham campus in Oshawa, about an hour away from the main campus. All of the other graduate programs are located in Peterborough. Um, next question, can I register for only fall semester or I have to register for both fall and winter term at the same time for getting a full time student status mentioned in the letter? Yeah, so yeah. fall terms, all of our semesters are open right now, fall term, winter term, and 2022 spring summer term. If you do know your schedule, go ahead and register for all those. If you're only comfortable registering for fall right now, you have till September 10th to get your fall registration set. You have until January 10th to get winter registration and May 10th to get your spring registration, registration set. So if you know those, go ahead. If you don't, more than free to wait um, until those terms start to get those sorted. However, if you however, are applying, there's yeah. always a however, if you are applying for OSAP, OSAP, the my recommendation is to apply for OSAP for the fall and winter terms mm -hmm. and then do an extension for the summer term. And the reason that you would get 60% of your OSAP in the fall, 40% in the winter, and then another assessment for the spring, therefore you get three different terms. But you must be enrolled in the holder course in order to match your OSAP application. So it would be required that you register for the fall and the winter holder courses. That was the aside because there seems yeah. to be in grad studies there's always the exception. Wait. <laughs> um sorry, I was, I saw a couple more registration questions here, I think. Course registration when I go into my trend and try to click the course, express registration or course register and drop, it just keeps loading. Um that may just be a server issue. It, it is. is a busy time of year for registration with grad just opening up. Um, I would suggest to keep trying. And if it frustrates you, send me an email and I can manually register you. Easy to do. Yeah. And, and it depends can... on the browser as well. Thank you for that point. Somebody just wrote in. But it does happen um, sometimes if you're using the wrong browser, mm -hmm. especially if you're using... Um, Explorer doesn't seem to work very well in there. Um, other questions? Thank you to Jesse, or if there's people answering these questions, there's quite a few of them to go through. Um, Course-based programs are definitely the same as Aaron mentioned. They're, it's a four-term, 16-month course, and they do go every term. There, there are not breaks Continuous. in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Feel free to jump in here, Erin. I'm slow reading and <laughs> grab the next question. Um, how many courses are required to register to stay as a full-time student? Can we- That depends on your program. So each program sort of has a um, suggested course load. Um, so I'd reach out to your administrative assistant about that one. Hey, um, yeah, the more registration, how many courses are required? Oh, no, sorry, I just did that one. How many courses in the fall and winter semester constitute a full-time course load? Lots of registration questions. Additionally, mm -hmm. are you required to take courses in the spring or is that primarily devoted to research? 
very program specific. So some of our programs offer a full array of courses over the spring summer term. Some offer very few, some offer an electives, um, some develop reading courses with their students and other students are um, taking no coursework over that term and dedicating that time to their research and, and writing. So again, very specific to your program. Um, we do have one question here about changing programs. Um, you might just want to send us an email just directly to graduate at trentu.ca because you have a couple of questions there about switching programs and transfer credits and that. That might be easier just to answer offline if you can um, send us an email. Again, graduate at trentu.ca and, and we'll just answer that one um, directly to you. Um, do I have to choose courses before paying the tuition? Um, no, not really, right? You, I mean, it, tuition for our professional programs is due September 1st. So we would encourage you to get registered and into your courses by that date. If you are registered now and over the next few weeks, the billing will be applied to student accounts prior to the due date. So you will be seeing the um, tuition amounts show up on your student accounts. If you are a student with funding in your letter of offer, funding will be applied to the accounts later in August towards, or sorry, it's in September, um, prior to your red prior to your payment deadline. So you will have a full um, assessment of your fees and funding by the time your fees are due. Um, my account is not showing my fees owing. So right now registration just opened. The billing should be applied over the next few weeks and updated um, every week until necessary. Um, is there an assigned registration date? So graduate students, no, we um, opened registration August 1st for all graduate students. Like I said, it is open for fall, winter and spring, summer now. So you can go ahead with all of those terms or if you're just comfortable adding fall at this time, um, that's fine as well. A lot of um, questions around what to take, what um, reading courses should I take, how many courses should I take. I hope that a lot of those questions will be answered in your program orientation. Those are hard questions to answer because everybody listening today is in a different program with sort of a different um, course load toward their degree requirements. So those questions are probably best for your program orientation or to email your program administrator um, so that you understand how your program works and your area of study gets set up. Parking permits, finding parking is not has not been difficult, um, especially when not everybody is coming to campus yet. So I'm assuming the fall term will remain the same. Parking permits are available through the card office. So for graduate students, they are optional. Um, parking passes and transit passes are something that you would have to actively opt into in order to receive. You are not automatically charged for those. So if you go to our student card office, one of the um, features there is parking passes and transit passes. And the information there should um, be very clear on how you sign up for those and how you are charged for those. Okay. We have questions here um, regarding a justification or a support letter from Canada Immigration. Um, you can email us directly and I can answer more questions about that. Um, International can help you a little bit, but the short answer is that with a verification of enrollment letter and with a letter of your letter of admission, you should be fined across the border right now. There has been the odd person having troubles, but that's because they were leaving in July and Can Canadian immigration has really wanted people to be four weeks before the start of the program. So out of, I think, 65 people, there's been two people where it's been an issue, but that was prior to August 1st. So um, if you have those two letters, but feel free to email us and we'll give you the instructions on how to get the verification of enrollment letter and you should already have your letter of offer. Um, that should be all that you need. Again, there's, email graduate at trentu.ca. There's some finance questions and I can provide, um, answer them all in one general swoop. Okay. There will be PowerPoint presentations posted um, and Lori, where will they be posted so students know? 
I have posted the link in the chat to our orientation page. So you might have to scroll up a little bit or I'll just repost it again momentarily, but it'll all be posted on our orientation page. So it's kind of divided out by, you know, Trent Graduate Student Association, Finances, Trail College, and you scroll down, it'll list the event um, and it'll list resources. So it'll all be included there very shortly. So the orientation page, for people that are asking questions about finance, there will be there are PowerPoint presentations. I'm just doing the final touches. They should be ready and posted ideally by the end of day tomorrow. So you can look at them over the weekend. It'll be something exciting for you to do for your weekend plans. But um, they will answer questions about OSAP. There'll be questions about um, graduate bursaries. There'll be posts about research thesis programs, awards and funding. And there's um, a PowerPoint on how to make your payments and your fees and payments. So those resources should answer many of the questions that are being addressed about finance. Um, and payment plans are, there was about, I don't know, 20 back about but payment plans. That's on the My Trent portal, your student My Trent portal under the finances tab. And it says how to request a payment plan. And then you submit that. And I'll review them before the end of September and you'll get a, uh, details about that. I don't think I have a PowerPoint for that, but I'll, I'll work on one. <laughs> Some point. <laughs> I, so I think we can eliminate all those finance questions because they're being addressed. And OSAP was in, indicated there. And OSAP is a Canadian domestic Ontario um, provincial funding program. Each province has their own funding program. International students are not eligible for the OSAP program. Okay, so we, I think I, thanks, yeah. Jane. Yeah, that was yeah. great. We have a couple questions here. Um, what about office space? Erin, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all research-based students receive office space. Um, and that's handled through your program office. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay, a um, couple questions about GTAs. Um, when can you expect to receive your placement? I think that should be coming fairly soon. Now, if you haven't yeah. got it already, it should be really soon yeah. from your from your department again. Yeah, programs are working through those assignments now. Um, some of them have reached out and let the students know of the assignment. Some of them are still working on that, but this is very much the season, sort of the week next this week and next week. Those those are happening. Mm -hmm. And the teaching assistants ships; those are available to research based students. Um, international and domestic. So there is a question about that, whether they're available to international students. So it's more depending on your program, not whether you're international or domestic. So they are part of the funding offer for research-based students. And we do have those offered in our letter of admissions. Those are not positions that are available for students to apply for. Right. Um, there's some interesting questions. Sorry, I just saw a question. And I'm like, I could answer that one. That would solve future questions the bridge program i see a few questions about the bridge program that is an undergraduate um, initiative uh if everyone were to review everyone's tuition is a little bit different depending on what program what stream they're in the tuition page is updated and it's on the graduate website it provides that details we can post deadline. that in the chat here we can post where you find your tuition amounts yeah, I can grab some links too for people. Okay. This is actually kind of productive. We're handling so many questions. Maybe they will help with their email. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping people are finding it helpful. Sorry, I'm trying to dodge my camera and get my links and do that. Um, your account is not currently showing your fees. Did you just answer this one, one of you? It's not gonna yeah. show up until- Yeah, so registration just opened this week, August 1st. Um, as students are getting registered, then our billing team will start applying the billing um, in the month of August and continuing to refresh that as needed. And the prices for online classes are exactly the same as um, live classes, in-person classes. So- Yeah, there's no Yeah, difference. unfortunately there's no reduction there. Um, can I apply for a full tuition scholarship before fall 2021? This is somebody in sustainability studies. No, sorry, that's a very straight up answer. Um, the applications tend to happen 
uh, for OSA OGS. It's in February of 2022 with the start date of May 2022, um, September 2022, and January. So you have to apply almost a year ahead where we do the adjudication, we determine eligibility, and then allocate. So if you're just starting your graduate program in a research-based program, you would start to do the scholarship um, process this year for the following year. And that doing, is it. Yeah, highly encourage you to do that. Lots of registration questions here. I'm just scanning to see if there's something that's more general since there is a registration drop in coming up um, this afternoon. Um, unless you've seen these, Erin, and they're just super quick answers. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me about the two components? Like, I think this one's a little, maybe not. Can you tell me about the two components of registration, registering for courses and registering as a full-time student? So yes, this causes a few questions every year. So we do ask the students to register in what we refer to as the placeholder um, course. It's under, when you do go into the course registration, you're going to select as your subject, graduate studies full-time or graduate studies part-time. After that, you'll select whether you're a master's student or a doctoral student. We do have students that um, complete their coursework in one or two terms. Some of our doctoral students do take very little coursework. So this is our way to ensure that we have you here and build and active every term of your study. So you sort of think of that as part one of your registration process. Every term we do ask that you check in and let us know you're here as a full-time or part-time student studying. And then step two would be to select your courses. So only if you're taking courses or have course requirements in your program, then you proceed to step two, which is um, under the subject headline in the registration system, you would at that point pick your subject area. So if you're in environmental and life sciences, you pick that under your subject. It would feed back the courses that are available to you and um, you could go ahead and register at that point. We do not have reading courses online. Undergrad classes, you cannot register for online and you cannot register to audit courses online. Those are all handled through your program office. So please reach out to your academic administrative assistant and ask about um, how to do any of those if applicable. Um, billing, like I said, billing will go on in the next um, few days to weeks and continue to be updated. Um, but if you do want to go ahead and make your payments early, our fees are posted on the website. If you had a um, acceptance fee as part of your program, you could subtract that amount and um, ultimately pay the difference. So if you can do that math, you can go ahead and pay now, um, or you can wait for the billing to be applied prior to the due date. Sorry, I'm just, I have only been looking at the Q&A and answering people. Um, I'm just scanning the chat here. I think we'll just go for maybe a couple more minutes. And honestly, like the purpose of this session was just to introduce you to everybody on our team and all the upcoming events. So if you have anything specific with registration, with finance, we do have a lot more upcoming sessions that we can definitely answer your questions um at the pertinent session just scanning do you, if you guys see anything else it's kind of general um program orientation i think aaron mentioned someone's wondering about management you should be receiving an email from from them soon mm -hmm. about the date and, and time. for management students our um folks in durham at the durham campus are preparing a orientation specifically for you to go over some of the um, staff supports and resources available to you at that campus Someone's asking about paying their tuition now. That is totally possible. There's instructions online on how to pay your tuition and it will just sit on your account and be applied at the beginning of the term when it is due. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Jane, Jesse, Aaron, do you see any other ones that are kind of general? Um, I see a GTA one here and that's a little bit more my area as well. For GTA assignments, to fill out our paperwork, do we need to have an assignment for both the fall and winter terms up front? Um, 
I'm trying to remember what program you're from, Megan. Um, it, it, the answer is no. There's a couple programs that usually just do one program or one term at a time. So that is totally fine. All we need um, by the deadline at fall is just the fall. And then you can submit another form in winter. The majority of programs do do both at the same time, but it's totally fine if you're submitting one as long as it has the fall information on it. And then starting online this fall, so if your program does offer courses online, um, not in person or a hybrid mix of them, uh, you don't have to tell anyone, you don't have to let us know. We are aware of um, all of the program offerings this year. If you do get your visa and want to join in person uh, midway through the term, that would be very much up to the program that you're in. So we can't answer that question as a general reply, but if you want to reach out again to your program or your program admin, they can help you with those details and let you know what is available to you this term um, in terms of available study options. Mm -hmm. AMOD Big Data is offered in Peterborough only. It's only the Master of Management that's in Durham. Um, the YouTube channel where the session will be posted, I, I don't have the link right at the moment, but I will email it out. So obviously you're registered for the session, so I should have your email. So I will send out the link once it's posted there. And then all of our um, all of our sessions that are being recorded will be on the same YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. It's a Trent channel, a, a grad studies channel within Trent, but I don't know the address right off the top of my head. So I can't type it in here, but it will be also linked to the orientation website that I've posted the link to in the chat a couple of times during today's call. Um, we'll go for one more minute and just see if there's anything else here. We are recording this. So if anybody's watching this, it might be a little boring the last couple of minutes, <laughs> but we'll finish up. Um, there's Jane, did you see anything or Jesse that we should talk about out loud? Probably tons, but it's just there's like too much, too much to go forward. It's great for all this interest and have so many people here and being able to help you. The um, academic calendar, I've posted that link. How to make a payment, I've posted that link. The bursaries, the due dates are not accurate, but they will be posted. It's typically around the 28th of September, 28th of January, 28th of May. I do send out emails, so make sure that you're looking for my emails because I send you information about money, um, opportunities, registration information. Aaron's probably posted that link somewhere. The orientation link has been posted. I think those were the general questions. And Aaron, what time is your session? Is it two to four this afternoon? There's a drop-in session. If anyone does have any specific questions on registration or anything, I can help you with in that regard. Absolutely. Uh, there's one last question I'd like to answer. Um, what is Trent U Blackboard? So Blackboard is um, Trent University's learning platform. So once you register for classes, uh, most schools have a learning platform where the um, professor or um, instructor is hosting most of the course materials, posting the syllabus, often has um, chat features, assignment features, um, drop boxes and that sort of thing. So this Blackboard is what Trent uses. Um, I was just going to put a link in, in here, but we will put it on our website as well. Our IT department does have a really great resource for onboarding onto Blackboard and just some of the features that are available to you as a student or as a GTA. Okay. I'm sorry. I think there's still a few more there, but I think with a general answer is that Aaron and Jane have just provided and all the links that are there. Um, hopefully you've been able to grab a few of those links. Um, if not, go to our website and you should be able to find it pretty easily. Um, but yeah, we're really looking forward to and hoping that you'll join us in the upcoming ses sessions that we have. I'm sure you'll come up with more questions as you think about everything we've talked about today and just as you start preparing for graduate school. So please um, register and for these other sessions, we'll look forward to seeing you there and we'll have a time for a Q&A at the end of each of those um, specifically to that topic. Um, um, and in particular, as Erin mentioned at the beginning, the August 26 one, that's kind of our big one with um, the provost there and a variety of other people that are there to welcome you and give you some information. So 
Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you very much. There was okay. a lot of people here, and it was a great event. And um, we look forward to seeing you in person soon, but over the next few weeks virtually. Yes. Thank you, Lori and Aaron, for putting this together. And uh, I feel like we answered a bunch of questions, so I'm hoping that'll put people's mind at ease. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you for doing that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to stop. I guess we just sign 